Well, good morning, everybody. You weren't expecting me, were you? <laughs> I am glad to be here with you today. Welcome to all of our wonderful guests. I am Pastor Dan. And uh, oh, y'all are so awesome. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Like jelly, baby. How sweet. <laughs> oh, it's a joy to see you this morning. I, uh, I'm here on behalf of Pastor Dusty and Kendra, and I have a, uh, a statement to read. Multiple pages. It is from Pastor Dusty, multiple pages. <laughs> I will read as he instructed me to do so word for word. <laughs> Dan, do not go off script. That was his last admonition to me. All right. <clears throat> this past weekend at church, I shared with you that I recently had a heart procedure to correct an electrical issue of my heart, a relatively safe and simple procedure that went very smoothly overall. Unfortunately... Over the course of the last week, I have suffered a minor complication that has brought with it some lingering side effects as a result of that surgery. After meeting with my doctors this week, they have assured me that these side effects are only temporary and should subside with more rest, some focused efforts, and a slower speed over the course of the next few weeks. Since then, my wife, Kendra, our team of pastoral overseers, and my father... Pastor Dan, have all met and agreed that it would be in my best interest to take a few weeks to move at a slower ministry work pace to allow my body the necessary time to completely heal as a result. While this has been somewhat of a frustrating season for me because of how much I love what I do and what I had planned to share with you this month, I have agreed to the wisdom of those to whom I am accountable will heed their instruction and will move forward at a much slower pace over the next two to three weeks. We do not anticipate this being long in nature, but felt it was important to communicate with you nonetheless. Over the next couple of weekends, some of our incredible circle of trusted ministry friends will be with us to minister to you, including Pastor Brett Jones of Grace Church of Humble next weekend, who served as a pastoral overseer for this church for many years and helped officiate our wedding 16 years ago. I commit to you that our weekend experiences are going to remain impact impactful and the only difference is that my schedule will be much more limited over the next few weeks. It is my genuine hope that I'll be able to attend some of our weekend services during this time as well. Thankfully, the pastoral team at HC is strong and everything in our church will continue to move forward as planned. We have an incredible church, healthy and strong, and way bigger than me or any one leader. Kendra and I have always strived to serve this church with our best foot forward, and it's impossible for us to ask you to keep your own hearts and lives healthy if we do not work to model that ourselves. I want to stress once again that this is minor in nature, and the hardest part is already behind us, and we believe this break will be very short-lived. However, during this time, I might be slower than usual to answer emails, texts, and calls, and my ministry and commitments will remain limited in this season. Don't hesitate to reach out to our team of pastors and elders for anything you need as they stand by ready to assist and serve you. I ask for your prayers as moving slowly is not something that I do easily, but I... I'm doing my best to acknowledge that this is a marathon, not a sprint, and God willing, Kendra and I will give the entirety of the rest of our life for many years of serving in this church. I want to publicly thank my wife, who has walked with me through these last several months by my side. She will be hosting Renew Conference for all of our ladies in just a few weeks, which is going to be amazing. Lastly, I want to thank my handsome and talented father, Oh, wait, I got off script there a little bit. <laughs> uh, for picking up the ball this week to minister to you. He'll do great, and he needed to do a little work anyway. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> 
Kendra and I love you greatly, Pastors Dusty and Kendra Dean. And uh, we love uh, Pastor Dusty and Kendra. In fact, this month, two years ago this month, they were uh, placed in leadership in this church to lead this pastor into the future. And they have done an incredible job, haven't they? And let them know they're watching via the stream today. Let them know you love them. That's it. We love you, Pastor Dusty and Kendra. Thank you so, so, so much. And welcome to all the rest of you folks. Come on, let those folks who are watching us today via the stream, give it up for them as they join us. I, uh, I love this place. I tell you, it is, is, uh, it's more than just a church home to me. Uh, did, you, uh, did you know that uh, I've spent 36 years of my life around this place, and it's just a, a place that I dearly love and appreciate. And uh, I'm going to do my best today to not embarrass our lead pastor who's at home and give you something good that you'll leave here feeling good uh, about. Did you know that trees in Scripture appear to have a very special place in the mind of God? You can tell the love story of Jesus really going from Genesis all the way through the Bible, just, just using trees as an illustration. Trees seem to be uh, connected in a special way to man and to God. started out this way. Listen to this. Genesis 2-7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, and man became a living person. And then the very next verse says that God did something special. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. And then the following verse starts this journey with the trees. It says, the Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground. Trees that were beautiful, trees that produced delicious fruit. So literally, we have God making man, and then he plants a garden. That's the first image we have of God is as a gardener. And then the, the next thing you see is trees, and there's a correlation between man and trees. They're all through Scripture. They seem to work together. Uh, uh, think of our relationship with trees today. We thrive off the oxygen that trees release. I love to go up in Colorado and stand in one of those big pine groves, and that just you just breathe in that fresh oxygen that's coming off of those trees. And trees, uh, they, they uh, receive the CO2 that we release. We really need each other. So I'm not saying you need to go hug a tree today, maybe half hug, but uh, trees I see have a connection with us, and, and man has this special relationship with trees. In fact, Jesus gives his life for humanity while hanging on a tree. Uh, think of this. <clears throat> there is a miracle in the New Testament that Jesus performs and he spits on some dirt and he makes some little mud balls and he puts it on a blind man's eyes and then he lays hands on him and he prays. He has the man wash his eyes and Jesus asks, what do you see? And, and Mark 8 tells us that the man looked around and he said, yes, I see people but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Now, here's the deal. He really wasn't that far off. He needed Jesus to pray for him again and give him greater vision. But the truth is, when you see people, they're like trees. And there are multiple scriptures that talk about being rooted and planted like a tree. Uh, uh, that beautiful verse of scripture that says you're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. But the current mindset of a lot of Christians is they kind of have a potted plant mindset. Uh, the mindset of God was you're going to be rooted and planted. Uh, what's supposed to happen is you find a place and you plant yourself, you plant your flag, you let the roots go down deep, but then you let the flag be planted in you. It goes both ways. I plant my flag and I'm in. Even if it's a weekend that I don't really like. Even if it's a weekend when the older man is preaching on a Sunday. I'm, my, my, my roots are planted and I'm going to show up. Even if the worship songs on that Sunday are not my favorite ones. You plant your flag, but you also let the flag be planted in you. This is my church. I'm planted here. But we have some people who are potted plant Christians in this area. Potted plant Christians 
they look around and say, I, I don't like what's going on right now, and I'm very mobile, so let, let's go somewhere else. Move me over. It's too hot here. Move me over somewhere else, or move me in the shade. Potted plant Christians. Plot, potted plant Christians are limited in the fruitfulness versus someone who is planted. A potted plant Christian is dependent on what happens to it. Man, I, I hope I get watered. I hope somebody brings some fertilizer by for me. I hope some, something good gets passed along to me. But a rooted plant says, it's all good. We may be in a drought, but I've got some roots going down deep to a system that most people don't know anything about. I am rooted and planted in the house of God. Listen to what the scripture says. And now, just as you've accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord, you must continue to follow him and let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then, what does that mean? That means because, because what? Because then your faith will go strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. And then listen to this. This is 2021 scripture for sure. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the social networking of this world. Oh, no, I didn't say this. The spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Just kind of sounds like social media, doesn't it? Uh, the Lord saw way in advance what social media was going to look like, and he just said, don't get caught up in all that nonsense. Rooted people don't get caught up. Rooted people are not sucked into the vortex of loud drama or hashtags. I'm rooted. I'm planted. Rooted people stand tall. They flourish. It doesn't matter the season. Becky and I recently went to California on our anniversary and visited a, a vineyard and they pointed out some vines at the south end of that vineyard, and they said, those vines have, have been planted for 40 years. Their roots go down into the soil 30 feet. We don't have to worry about watering those vines. That's how deep their roots go down, 30 feet into the soil. And, and, and we need to be planted and rooted like that as well. David said it this way in Psalm, passion for your house has consumed me. It's consumed me. That's what we need. We need uh, church people where the trees are consumed by the passion for the Lord's house. Before you got on the scene here, I want to tell you that there were some people that were passionate about God's house. There were some people back in the old days who were passionate about being in God's house and it allows you to be able to sit in this building today and enjoy the fruits of their uh, committedness to the house of God. We, we uh, said goodbye to a dear sweet lady in our church, Ann Wagner, this week. 52 years a part of this church. 52 years. Think about that. Because passion consumed her. And there is no place else I'd rather be than in the house of God today with you wonderful folks. It's not just because I've poured my blood, sweat, and tears into this place for 36 years. I love it here. Some people, some people may have thought, well, he's not preaching anymore, and he's not singing anymore. He's not leading worship anymore. He'll probably just, just no, it's not about that. It's about I love being with this community of believers every Sunday that's possible. I want to be here. Passion for the house of God has consumed me. And, and the church is Jesus' answer to the problem for a whole lot of people that need him. I believe that when it's working right, listen closely to me today, there is nothing more powerful in the world than the local church. I love this church because this church is Jesus' answer to the problem for a lot in this community that are going through all kinds of issues. Whatever the problem is, and some of you are way too young to remember this, but Sylvester Stallone said, if crime is the disease, then I'm the cure. 
God has so fashioned things in this age of grace that whatever the problem is, you find the answer in the community of believers called the church. You see, the church doesn't have a mission. The mission has the church. The church was not the mission of Jesus. Lost people were the mission of Jesus. I came and to seek, to seek and save those which were. Those which were. But the church is Christ's answer to the mission. Jesus loved the church. He called it his church. He died for it. And there is nothing like the local church when it's going right. Its beauty is indescribable. Its power is breathtaking. Its potential is unlimited. It comforts the grieving and it heals the broken. And in the context of community, it builds bridges to seekers and it opens its arms to the forgotten, the lonely, and the disillusioned. Some of you are here in this building today because God used his church to reach out to you when you were in a broken state. And when you walked in the door, you turned to your spouse and you said, we're home. This feels like home. This feels right. The church breaks the chains of addiction. It frees the oppressed. It makes the marginalized of the world feel like I belong. I matter. I, I'm, I'm supposed to be here. And the potential of the local church is almost more than we can grasp. The power of the church is limitless. And we have to think big. I love this church. I love this church because it's the hope of the world. There's no place else I'd rather be. I love this church because it's part of the only institution Jesus ever built and promised to bless. It's the only one. Think about what Jesus could have done, what he could have established. He had the power to build anything, but he built one thing, the church. Not a university, not a club, not a hospital. He built a church. In Matthew 16, he said, I will build my church. And that's a marvelous statement. He didn't say, I'm going to build a television ministry. I'm going to build a hospital. I'm going to build a social media following. I will build my church. And Pastor Dusty and Kendra, let me encourage you today by saying, uh, you, you need to remember that. Some will say to you, how big are you planning on building the church? You need to tell them, I have no desire to build the church. Jesus is the builder. I'm just working here. He's going to be the builder. And I'm not going to be in competition with him if he's going to be the builder. We're working to be build, uh, the, the ones that help in his church when he builds his church. The moment you think you own the church, it's only going to be as good as a dean can make it. But I want to tell you, our desire is to reach people who are away from God and to disciple those who are saved. But Jesus is the one who is building the church. I love this church because we win in the end. No place I'd rather be because we win in the end. Well, the Cowboys look pretty good so far this year. Any Cowboy fans in the room? I'm excited but they are the Cowboys. <laughs> I was so excited about the Longhorns yesterday, 28 to seven in the first quarter. And I was thinking to myself, this is the year Boomer Sooner is going down. I had high hopes, things were looking so good. But they, the Longhorns, they have a way of breaking my heart each and every year. I've made the statement so many times in the past, Regarding the Longhorns and the Cowboys, they get me excited and then they just break my heart into a thousand people, pieces. But let me tell you something today. The church is going to win. The church is going to win. In the end, we win. The church is going to win. People may pour their lives into a business and see it fail. People will pour their lives into a career and end up with little or nothing to show for it. People decide they're going to go all in with their finances on an investment only to find that they lost all of their investment. Some people try a certain career that ends up being a dead end, so they switch to something else, and then they say, that's tasteless, and I need adventure in my life. 
It, uh, there are people that get into dead-end relationships that, that have no lasting value. There was nothing there. The only thing that will last and is guaranteed to have eternal return on investment is the church that God formed with his own hands. It will do a better job than any political party. It will outdo any movement. It will outdo any rebellion. It is greater than any force in the world socially. We will win in the end. So plant and pour your life into a winner. Look through history. Satan has tried to wipe out the church since the day that Jesus revealed This is what I'm going to do. Satan has tried to stop what Jesus started. Even today, he tries to make us politically incorrect. He has the woke crowd trying to cancel us. We've been branded irrelevant, ignorant, uneducated, and dependent on outdated models. We are the target of Hollywood. We are hated and attacked by extremists. Over the years, Christians have been persecuted and even martyred by the thousands. Go back to Rome, the days of Nero, where Nero would dip Christians into tar pits and then put them on post and light them like candles, human torches to light the road to his palace. You don't even have to look that far back. Jump to current day. Did you know that the most persecuted religion in the world today is Christianity? Don't miss what I'm telling you. Right now, while you're in the church at Heartland, the most persecuted belief system in the world is Christianity. In over 210 countries right now in our world, Christians are being persecuted. But I have something to tell you today. In the end, the church is going to be the winner. Somebody shout amen. Amen. (laughs) Hebrews says... Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. The church is unshakable. For every child of God defeats this evil world. How many of them? Everybody say, every child. Every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. Who wins in the end, 1 John 5? And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Don't get mad at me today. I'm just reading the Bible to you, and that's what it says. I love this church because the Word of God is preached without compromise here. The Word of God is preached here. There's no place else I'd rather be. doesn't always make you feel warm and fuzzy. In fact, sometimes it feels like you're hugging a porcupine. But, but, but the Word of God is preached here. Uh, there, there was a, a, a Wednesday night, a first Wednesday not long ago that I left. I, I left out of church and Pastor Dusty carved on me a little. And I got in the car thinking to myself, I really didn't like that message too much. But I needed it. I needed it to be a better husband and a better man. And and sometimes the Word of God is like that. It's like a sword that pierces the bone and the marrow and gets down in the heart and twists and convicts us and asks us to be better and it sharpens us, corrects us if we're in need of that. It encourages us and it matters. I love this church because it's full of imperfect people just like me. And just like you, perfect people won't really enjoy being here. You'll feel out of place because we've all got a bunch of messes in this church. I heard a story about a pastor trying to drive home a point during his message. And he, he, he said publicly, I want the one person that is here in the building today that is perfect to stand to their feet knowing, of course, that nobody was going to stand. But much to his surprise, there was a man that stood up toward the back of the building. And the crowd kind of gasped, wondering how the pastor was going to handle that. The pastor didn't really know what to say, so he looked at the man and said, You, sir, you are perfect. To which the man pointed to his wife and said, No, I'm standing here in the place of her first husband. (laughs) 
That didn't really go over too good in first service either, did it? <laughs> there is no need to fake or put on a front at Heartland Church because everybody here, look around you, everybody here has messed up and your mess is not an issue here. I know and trust a God who can turn messes into successes. Henry Nouwen said it this way, he who thinks he has finished is finished. Those who think they have arrived, they've lost their way. Those who think they've reached their goal have missed it. Those who think they are saints are demons. I wish I'd have been smart enough to write that. I love this church because it's generous and others-minded. No place else I'd rather be. Folks, I've been around here for a long time. I wish you could have sat in the seat that I've been in for so many years and watched what you could see what I've seen with the generous people of this church. If you're stingy with your time and your talent and your treasure, you're probably not going to like it around here because one of the core values of Heartland is that we're going to be generous with those around us. We just can't ever allow that to change. I love this place because just this year, it has blessed Grace Bridge slash Master Cares that's helping to feed hungry people in our own community. They've, they've reached out through Embrace Grace, a ministry to young girls with unplanned pregnancies, through Christian Community Action, CCA here, through Metro Crest Services, through schools in the Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District, uh, District McWhorter Elementary, DeWitt Perry Middle School, McLaughlin Strickland Elementary and Turner High School. This church has reached out to all of those schools to say, we're here for you. This church has reached out to help folks at the Fountain of Rosemead Apartments with food and personal care, prayer for families. This church has reached out through ARC, the Association of Related Churches, to help plant churches in our country. This church has reached out to the ladies in, in uh, prisoners in Gatesville State Prison. This church has reached out with through Convoy of Hope, providing food and help in the area of natural disasters. This church has helped King of Kings Church in Jerusalem, Fellowship of Israel-related ministries, through Messenger International, through Carmel Community Church in India, through One Day L.A., and the Watts Empowerment Center in LA. How are we able to help all of those folks? Because you are generous. And because you're so generous as a church, we don't even have to get up and say, help us with an offering to help these folks. Because you are generous, we're just able to be generous without even asking for you to be generous. Thank you, Heartland Church. There's no place else I would rather be. I love this church because of the diversity of culture and generations. I want to be even more diverse. Please, Lord, help us to be more diverse. One of the greatest joys of my life has been able to, uh, that I've been able to travel with Phillips Craig and Dean to Brooklyn Tabernacle in, in Brooklyn, New York. It's a very unique church, and we've been able to be there on many occasions. One Sunday when we were there, Pastor Jim Simbola, the pastor of the church, started asking people, stand and tell us what country that you represent. That went on for, I can't remember, but there were 121 nations that were represented in that church on that Sunday morning. Speaking of diversity, listen, Acts 2 says that when the church was born, when Jesus gave finally gave birth to the church he had just died for. Every nation under heaven was positioned to where that everyone heard in his own language the message of the, the, the New Testament church. The New Testament church is multicultural. It has all kinds of people in it. I love it. When Jay and Latricia stand up here and do that soul singing and they can do those trills and all that fancy stuff that Dusty has wanted to do since he was just a little child and he can't do it. Stop trying. Because it's, it's like this. If you got it, you got it. If you ain't got it, you ain't going to get it. I like Louise who wasn't up here today, but usually he's up here, that my Puerto Rican brother, doing things on the neck of that bass guitar that 
just make me want it. He's just b -b 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 bad to the bone on that bass guitar. I like Bubba on the guitar with his Hispanic flavor and Jordan, my black brother, who on some Sunday, I wish they would just unleash and let him go crazy on the drums in that cage. I love the diversity and I want and long for more. I don't want to be a white church. I want this church to look like what heaven is going to look like. And listen to me. If you don't like diversity, when you get to heaven, if you make it, you're going to be very uncomfortable up there because it's going to be every nation and every tribe and every culture gathered together worshiping God as we know here. And it's not just diversity of race and culture, but a diversity of age because generations matter. That's a big thing to me now that I've hit my 40s. <laughs> we want the hip, and we want those with new hips. <laughs> my sweet mother-in-law was here this morning, first service, 85 and looking good and, and proud of being 85. And, Worshiping God down here. Welcome here. 85-year-olds are welcome here. We want the young. We want the old. And everything in between. I like the seasoned veterans that I look around here and see on Sunday mornings. The Langhams and the Glorias and the, the Brenda Adams and the Charlottes and the Innsmingers and those with the gray hair. Well, not all of them have gray hair because there's help for that, you know. I like the ones who look clean and polished, and I like the moose who comes to our church. Moose, who looks like one of the members of ZZ Top. Come on, somebody, we, we value diversity here at Heartland Church. No place that I would rather be this, this like this. I love this church because it cares about the well-being of the individual and the family. Listen to me this morning. Listen closely. Childless couples, valued here. Parents with children, valued here. Single adults, valued here. Teenagers, valued here. Children, valued here. Anyone who has a family, came from a family, wants a family, you are valued at Heartland Church. I love this church. And everybody who walks through the door matters to us. You saw children dedicated today. This is where your children have been or will be dedicated. This is where your children have been or will find salvation. Here is where your children have been or will be baptized like my first grandchild was a few Sundays ago. Here's where your children and your spouse and you will be pastored and discipled. Here's where you'll find forgetting and forgetful grace. You will find acceptance here. You will find authentic lifetime relationships here. The highlights of our life are celebrated here. And the trying times of our life are carried by others here. We have a pastoral team with the hearts of servants. We have a dream team Thank the Lord that loves to serve people. Because every person that walks through the doors of this church, we value and care about. I love this church because the worship is God-breathed, presented in excellence, and is engaging. Ah, uh, you don't know. You just don't know. Unless you've been around to some churches. I, I go to some churches that are two and three and four times the size of this church. And it's so painful during the worship, I almost have to get up and walk out. You have some of the most talented, most blessed singers and musicians. And, and they bless you every Sunday and we can get used to it. But I want to tell you. I texted Devin after he finished his song today and said, oh, that song is in your wheelhouse. You sounded so good today singing that song. And then Heather gets up right behind him. My God, we just, we, we're just, 
It's just unbelievable the talent we have in this church. And it's not just that it's presented excellence and that it is good, but it's God honoring and it's engaging and it reaches to your heart. I've had so many people tell me, including my Buddhist friend who does my hair, and he came to church one Sunday and he said, there's something about your music, it makes my eyes water. I want to say that's tears, my brother. And that's the Holy Spirit working through that music that's touching your life. And let me tell you something. You can have church online in your living room and it be good, but there is no substitute for being with God's people in a corporate setting. And, and to those of you watching online right now, please don't think I'm trying to make you feel bad. Shame off of you. There are circumstances that make it impossible for some people to be in church, and so I support you. But I want to tell you, there is a synergy that happens when God's people come together that can't be duplicated through a computer screen or through a TV screen. It just doesn't happen the same. God created a two-wing church. It was a church that met house, house to house, and it was a church that met in the synagogue. And let me t tell you, those two things are important. You, can't, you can have things happen in a connect group that won't happen in a corporate setting, but the opposite is true as well. There are some things that just won't happen unless you're in a corporate setting. It just can't happen in your living room at home. My wife and I, nine or 10 years into our marriage, and I've, I've been very open about this through the years, but the wheels fell off of our marriage at about year nine or 10. And it didn't feel like we were going to make it. We were going to counseling, but there were times we felt so all alone, even from each other, felt like giving up and giving in. And on so many Sundays, we would walk into church and we would sit on the pew on the front side of the old church in Irving on that first row with our family and the song would be just what we needed. And the message would be just what we needed. And we'd hug each other and say on the way out, we can make it another week. Let's just make it another week. And we would come in the next Sunday and repeat the experience of being with the people of God. We can make it another week. We can do this for another week. Hey, guess what? We just passed the 45-year mark in August. I think we're going to make it, y'all. I think we're going to make it. There's still some hard days, but I believe we've got it. Listen, we've been through things in our world this past 18 months like nothing we've ever been through in the history of the church. I don't know one preacher who saw 2020 coming. We were all like... 2020 vision. Let's have 2020 vision in 2020. And then our glasses got knocked slap off our head. <laughs> I don't know of one church that wasn't impacted. And there are people now who we just say the pandemic got them. It, 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 just, it may not have been the pandemic, but we haven't seen them. Could have been the election. Could have been social justice causes. May have been politics may have been the murder hornets. Don't forget the murder hornets. That was 2022. Something in the last 18 months has impacted a lot of people and it's overwhelmed them and we, we, we miss them. But guess what? We're just gonna keep on worshiping and keep on meeting together and keep on loving people and keep on loving God and keep on loving a lost world. We just gotta put the roots down and be trees planted in the house of God and have a passion for God's house. Paul said this, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Psalm 149, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the assembly of the faithful. We come in here with our hands and hearts lifted to him in worship. And guess what? It's like the old song says, when you start turning your eyes on Jesus, the things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The scripture says God inhabits the praise of his people. I love this place. 
God inhabits, that means God walks in and sits in the good chair. I haven't been to your house, but if you have a house, there's that chair. It's your chair. It's the good chair. I, I didn't have a chair until I got married. My dad had a chair. I didn't have a chair. But guess what? After I got married, I got me a chair. It's Papa Dan's chair. Don't sit in that chair. That's, that's my chair. And guess what? When we worship, when we come in and we worship the Lord in his sanctuary, Jesus takes that chair. We just move over and say, it's your chair. This is your chair. You inhabit the praise of your people. Let me tell you something. The church is the only entity that has a no-fail guarantee. The only way you can fail is by walking out. No other way you can fail. We win. But listen to this. Even the best boat in the world can't keep you out of the water if you won't get in it. Get in the boat, people. Turn to your neighbor and say, get in the boat. That's why I say to you today, there's no place else I'd rather be. God's church, it's the most beautiful thing. Imperfect, yet powerful to the pulling down of strongholds. Why would you not want to be a part of something like that? No place else in the world I would rather be than part of the church of Jesus Christ and this local assembly. Whew. And it's time for you to get on board. Time for you to sign up. Sign up for the dream team. Get off the sidelines and on to the field, uh, field of play. Find out what it feels like to be in the game, on the field, playing. Find you a place and get plugged in. What are you waiting on? If you're waiting on something perfect, guess what? You can go to every church in the Metroplex and there's a lot of great churches. There's a ton of great churches. There's not one perfect church. You're going to find something wrong everywhere you go if that's what you're looking for. But I want to tell you, the church that I'm a part of, Jesus Church, and this local church is a place I love to be and I think you'll love it too. All right, Pastor Dusty. If you hadn't given me this two-page of reading material here, I'd still have a little time left, but I got to close. <laughs> Stand to your feet in this room today, all over. I don't know, maybe you're here today kicking the tires and looking around. Maybe you're just doing that in your relationship with Jesus. You don't know him as your savior. Let me tell you, the greatest decision I ever made in my life was the day I gave my heart to him. Every head bowed in this place right now. Nobody's looking around. If you're here today, you say, Pastor Dan, I want to be a part of something that's going to win in the end. I want to be a part of Team Jesus. I want to be a part of this great church that he built. And I'm ready to commit my life to it today. I want you just to slip your hand up today and hold it up for a second until I can see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm so excited today that you're going to make this choice. Now, everybody in the room, just pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to make you the Lord of my life. I want you to sit in your chair. I thought it's my chair, but it's your chair. Take up residence in my heart. Forgive me for my mess. Forgive me for my sin. You know about it, and you love me anyway. Be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. You prayed that prayer this morning for the very first time. We believed all of heaven is rejoicing with you right now because that's what Scripture tells us. Come on and clap your hands to the Lord today if you're excited to be a part of his church. God bless you. Pastor Cody is coming right now.
It's great to be a part of his church, is it not? Amen. Thank you. Come on. Can we give it up for Pastor Dan? Do you love Pastor Dan? That's a great word. And he mentioned at the end of his message about joining the dream team. And this month, we're making it easier than ever to do that. The dream team is all of those people that have served you today, that have greeted you, that have made coffee. It's, uh, it's our volunteer that we call the dream team. And we, we couldn't do what we do without them. And they're making such an impact and a difference. And this month, at the end of the month, October 24th and October 31st, we're having what we're calling the Dream Team Preview Day. And so in the lobby, it will look like a Connect Sunday where we'll have tables out and all of our Dream Team coaches at each of the table. And you can sign up and be a part of the team without any strings attached. All you do is have a conversation with them. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that throughout the month. Be on the lookout for that. But if you're interested in joining the team and being a part of this house, that's a great way to do it. And this month, we're going to do our fast track growth track, and that's on Saturday, October 30th, and that's four steps of the growth track all in one day, and there you'll find a little bit about us as a church, but you'll also find out about you and your giftings and your talents and what God has called you to and how you can uh, be a, an asset to the kingdom of God and how you can do that. And so we'll hope that you'll join us for that again. We'll talk more about that throughout the month. So just be on the lookout for that. So today we have five ways to give our normal four ways that you can text or you can go to the Heartland Church dot com forward slash give or you can do in the kiosk but the fifth way is we have the carter blood care here with us where you can donate blood if you'd like to do that we call it the blood bus and it's right out there uh and if you would like to be a part of that you can do that today thanks so much for the generous generosity that uh, that you give and, and and all that you do we appreciate all that you do, and we love you for it. Let me pray for you, and our team will uh, exit us as we dismiss and worship. So, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for your word. Let it take root in our hearts, Lord, and we just pray that this would be the best week ever. God, I ask that you would give grace to everyone as they go throughout their week. Bless them today. Thank you for a great church, and thank you for all that you've done and changing our lives today. We love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church, lift your voice and sing this out today. Let